Right, we're going to have a look at how to go about drawing the curve interpenetration of this um, main pipe and the branch pipe entering into it. Um, I've got a front view and a top view drawn in first angle orthographic projection. Um, I think the trick to this is to try and figure out where you're standing in the drawing and then to number it accordingly. Okay, so I'm going to start out and I'm going to say, all right, um, I'm going to place number one at that point over there, and on my auxiliary view, there is point one at the top of the circle. I'm going to label this thing in an anti-clockwise direction, so that would be point two, point three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve over here. All right. Um, if I look at it, you can see that I'm closest to the four over here. Um, so when I'm labeling this thing, the four is actually going to be on this side of the object. My four will be over here. You can see there it is. There's me looking at the object. Four is closest to me. One is at the top. There's me. Four is closest to me. One is at the top. So if I'm going to get that, then this is going to be number one, number two, number three, number four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Okay, if I wanted to do it on this auxiliary view over here, there's number one, number two will be over there, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. If you look at it, number seven is closest to me over here, Look at it, there's number seven that's closest to me. Number one is further away from me and further away from that axis, obviously. Right, okay, if I've got that idea, then I can take these lines coming down from here at this angle of 30 degrees in this case, and I can say, okay, there's number one. It's coming along here. It intersects with the pipe. Let's see where it intersects with the pipe on this view. Well, there it is. It's traveling across there. And if I take a line coming up over here, I should find that it intersects at that point, And I can call that point number one of my curve of interpenetration. Right, where's number two? Well, number two is over here. Comes across, intersects with the pipe at that point. I take a line coming up until it hits this line coming out from point two. And I can label that as point two of the curve of interpenetration. Three, same story. There's three coming across over there. Take that up, and here is point three. Same thing goes with point four. Comes across, goes up, intersects. It should be on a center line, point four. Point five, take it across, take it up. Find where five is over here. Take it down. Find where five is over there. Uh, six, same story. Let me take that across. Take that up. Where's six? There's six coming over here. And I should be able to get, there's five, six, and this point over here, point number seven. There it is coming across, coming up, and it should intersect at that point over there where seven comes across. Right, once I've got that, I can join those points up with a nice little pre and curve and I can draw that in with no problem. Okay, so what happened to these other numbers, number 8, 9, 10, 11, 12? Well, if you look at it, they are behind these numbers. Um, it's exactly on the axis. If this thing had moved, then I'd be able to see a slightly deeper curve over here, and I'd end up with some hidden detail showing where the um, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12 would be. But in this case, it's just going to be directly behind this. So number six would be linked to number eight, number five and nine, number four and 10, number three and 11, number two and number 12. Those would be directly behind there. Right, you can see that. There I am with one, two, three, four, five, two, uh, six and seven in front of me and the other numbers are behind, and that would be a hidden detail line if I could see it. Right. Once I've done that, I can then take this information and I can draw the development drawing, which I'm going to do in the next video.